Hey there, everybody. This is Steve, Kilo, Juliet 7, Whiskey, Quebec, Kilo, from the comms and mobility with KJ7WQK YouTube channel. And uh, we're having a quick look and walk around of one of two recent acquisitions to the bike stable. And uh, that is the Rad Power Bikes Rad Runner. As you can see, it's a uh, bit of an interesting bike, a bit of a hybrid type approach, kind of a moped -y vibe, dare I say, between the step through frame and the shorter, wider sort of tire stance that's going on here. These are 20 inch rims with a 3.3 inch uh, version of the Kenda K Rad tire on it. Very popular street and trail mountain bike tire from, well heck, going on 20 years back now. Uh, I had some fun with it, customizing it for our family needs. We're sort of beginner, uh, wannabe fishermen. And uh, we're working on rigging this up for riding around and doing some shore-based freshwater fishing with the family. We already have some portable um, rods and reels, but I plan to actually further dial in this whole setup to carry a couple of uh, rods and reels probably off the front of this um, or off one of the sides uh, in a kayak style holster. Um, but we've definitely already customized them quite a bit already to make them work for the family's needs. These Rad Power bikes are a hugely popular solution in the entry level e-bike category. Um, and especially amongst the like semi nicer, more put together brands as opposed to like literally just ordering point blank from a fly by night, um, you know, some no name brand off of Amazon or something like that. Rad Power based in the Pacific Northwest, people know that. They're really right up the road here in Seattle in I think Ballard area. Um, no, they're not in Ballard. They're, well, yeah, no, no, they're not far from Ballard. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, Seattle area, uh, Pacific Northwest uh, based company. They will ship these direct to people. I think the Rad Runner is basic form. You know, forget your racks, forget your trunk bags and rear passenger seat, etc. Uh, just the bike. Uh, I think they'll ship this to your door for like twelve, thirteen hundred dollars plus tax. Um. most anywhere in North America. I don't know how people get them in other countries. I do believe they do get them all around the world. Um, I had some fun with the goofing off. I've had this motorcycle windscreen kicking around the garage for literally over a decade. And uh, this is the first little silly bike uh, I've seen in years that can almost support it and justify it. And uh, it's preposterous. The bike only goes 20 miles per hour, top speed, wide open throttle. Uh, but it's, uh, it's just fun. It's kind of, you know, got that moped vibe so we do have a headlight and taillight integrated on these bikes these are going to be a great solution for not only going out and doing you know naturally family exercise um, but exploration the fishing mission that we we're talking about picnicking you know try to do a catch and cook if we if we're lucky this season um, and we load the kids right on the back of these this is a half improvised improvised setup i had a leftover pillion seat from another build um, that fit beautifully on this back rack with literally, you know, the old incredibly versatile solution of zip ties through the through the seat bed of this guy here. And it's it's real rigid, it's great. It's a nice, nice pillion seat from another moped. Um, but we did incorporate uh, part of a Rad Power passenger peg kit and deflector shield for uh, my 10 year old, my nine year old uh, to go on the back. Uh, with me as a passenger uh, and that's working out wonderfully. We also have some really cool suspension belts that um, 
the pillion, the, the child rider wears as a vest, um, kind of like a harness, and then the belt goes all the way around from him to, to me. Uh, and in the case of my wife with our younger son, uh, likewise with him, same kind of harness, buckles around to her. So we always know where they are. We can feel them behind us. They can feel somewhat securely connected to us. And uh, for us, this is a really fun way to do the pillion slash tandem riding thing, um, but we're not out on full-size motorcycles and dicing it up in traffic with the cars too, too much. Um, other than in the residential setting here and there. So, um, but yeah, you know, as you can tell, these uh, Rad Powers have an incredible amount of versatility built into the frames. They're made to accept things like these baskets out back and racks and baskets up front. I got a rack secondhand from somebody. Ours came with the basket on the back. We got the bike used secondhand as I'm wont to do. As I explained in my video where we um, did the walk around of the tandem and, and showed that e-bike, uh, that particular bike, I also got second hand and in that case built it up with an electric motor conversion kit. These rads are really fun largely because you're already, you're buying into an ecosystem, not unlike my Honda Grom that I actually recently uh, parted ways with in a big shakeup in our stable. Uh, to make room for these guys. Uh, I haven't been riding the Grom very much the last couple of seasons. COVID, you guys already know, right? Um, and as anyone who has too many bikes and not enough time in this life knows, easy come, easy go. Make room for the new by rotating out some of the old. Honda Grom, great trading uh, chip in, you know, the horse trading game of uh, motorcycling and uh, was an easy one to... You know, it was a hard one to say goodbye to, but an easy one to uh, sell once I was ready to sell it and uh, did good on it and was able to more or less fund the purchase of not only this bike used, but a second Rad Runner used, which was um, a slightly different model than this one, namely the Rad Runner Plus, which we'll show you in a subsequent video. Um, but this is a fantastic bike that we're having a ton of fun with. This bike is already um, close to aesthetically the form that I think it's going to be in uh, for the foreseeable future. Functionality wise, we're just about there. And uh, indeed performance tuning wise, uh, these by the way are stock a 750 watt pedal assisted motor, um, you know, pedal bicycle. This is a single speed bicycle. It has a little tensioner down here, but there is no actual derailleur or multiple gears on this. I have one fixed gear ratio. I think that's like a 56 tooth up front and something like a 16 tooth out back. Um, this bike, as I said, however, is upgraded, including uh, some performance upgrades, and that is including a performance display and motor controller that's a non stock motor controller to the Rad Power. These guys are from the Pacific Northwest, so. I, I, I know that they're not ignorant of what they've done with this bike with the single speed and the, the gear ratio that's on it. I know the gear ratio is what it is, so you can assist the motor at the closer to higher cruising speeds, you know, that, that 15 to 20 mile per hour range, um, should you care to do so. Um, I'm a pedaler, so I do like to assist the bike through most, if not the entire ride. Um, but uh, it leaves a lot to be desired for hill climbing. And so as a result, uh, a lot of people pursue this path and I have pursued the path of the, of the upgrade, which on the Rad Powers, the popular, logical, semi plug and play, somewhat easiest to deal with upgrade is what people refer to as uh, the controller and display upgrade. And that is a aftermarket controller from one of several companies um, that draws more amps and somehow magically pulls more watts through the motor, you know, calls, summons more watts through the motor. It unfortunately doesn't magically erase a sort of hard RPM limit of the design of the motor, its windings and things in the, in the back of the motor. These aren't things that can be greatly altered by us stock without literally changing voltage. We're still on a stock battery. We're still on a stock wiring harness. This motor controller, a little brain at the bottom of the bike right here which you can see i have again securely securely 
fastened permanently on the bike with space age zip ties. Um, that motor controller will basically improve throttle response, improve torque and hill climbing to the tune of at least a displayed as much as 1500 watts or more, a little bit over, I've seen 1560 watts or so being summoned from our little 750 watt motor. It really does get you up the hills a lot better and it'll let you cruise in at very low levels of pedal assist. It's a five level pedal assist uh, type unit. Um, very comfortably and closer to your top cruising speed. Yes, your bike does become a little bit thirstier for power when you're pulling more amps. But if you wanna get up the hill at the end of your ride, you need the power to get up the hill at the end of your ride. And that's what we needed to get after. You wanna put a cooler full of snacks on the front of your ride and backup snacks on the back of your ride and take a friend with you on the ride you better find a way to make sure you can get up all the hills that you come across on your ride. Am I right? Uh, what have I got in the console, Steve? What do you got in the console, Steve? Let's take a look. This is a little Harbor Freight box, of course. Um, I got it mounted, you know, on a, well, not you know, but a little Harbor Freight box. I had my friends help me uh, bend some metal around and put some rivets in years ago, and I've had sitting around and been trying to figure out a, a reason to hang it on a bike ever since. Um, so, been been sitting on it underneath the bottom of this uh, case where you see I've got my KJ7WQK walkie with a removable antenna in here in case we want to check out the nets I've got a not so bright mag light that I hardly need this time of year very important ever important crypto lock my newest acquisition that I'm super excited about my little super rad super cool Redicus, um, what do we call this thing? Shortwave radio. Yeah, shortwave, AM, FM, everything tuner. Uh, it's got an MP3 player. It can record from the radio. It can record voice recording. Um, really don't know how to listen to shortwave effectively yet, everybody, but I am, you know, here, here I am. I got a shortwave capable receiver. I, I know it's super basic and kid stuff, but uh, we're going to learn how to use it possibly even together, right? So um, yeah, love this. Love this little case. Had it for ages. Fits just barely right in this spot. Love being able to carry my lock and whatever other little fun stuff. Put a sandwich in there, you know, put a Snickers bar in there too much fun. Uh, I got the old ram mount up in the cockpit. I'll show you guys the uh, show you guys the display real quick before we before we sign off on this one. Oh no, I gotta put in my password. Sorry. One moment. And we're in. Uh, I know. Silly feature, but what the heck. Uh, you get an ambient temperature readout on this display. I got this kit, you guys, from electrobikeworld.com. Uh, the more popular sellers include Bolton e-bikes and or someone called Big Game Bikes is another one I, I am aware of who I believe sells this kind of stuff. That was my average speed. There's a maximum speed readout. There's a live current speed readout. You have a resettable uh, trip and, and um, you know trip timer and distance. You've got your motor assist levels one through five you can turn it all the way down to you know no assist whatsoever when you don't even uh, at that point get throttle assist um this is a highly tunable system i don't think i'll be able to jump into settings yep not without power cycling right now for you guys but if you go into if you want to go into settings within five minute five seconds excuse me after booting you hit top and bottom buttons on your on your display right here hold them down for a moment and it'll bring up a whole diagnostic screen where you can set a whole bunch of parameters for your motor uh, really great kit from electro bike world shipped really quickly they had it in stock when nobody else did they weren't price gouging over the other outfits either 
Um, and while I found their website interface and their website resources a tiny bit clunky, they're there. Everything's actually there, so I'm just a dimbat and have my own problems. Uh, and I was also able to obtain same-day replies from Electro Bike World uh, from a team member there who, you know, sent me screenshots of a display with some settings on it, um, answered my questions about specific parameters that I was confused about. I had initially a pedal assist sensor, you know, went away on me. My pedal assist went away on me after my install. Um, I double checked my connections. It didn't uh, resolve itself. Uh, I triple checked my connections and it did seem to resolve itself. Um, but the whole way through, I was able to get, I wanna say three or four different replies from uh, somebody at Electro Bike World. And then I got a late reply, like another day later from the other, from the corporate replier. Um, but at least even they were following up, trying to help make sure that I got my bike up and running and excuse me as I just space my camera angle on you guys here all right that's a 15 minute uh, explanation of the rad runner and an intro to the electro bike world uh, motor controller that's already residing on this bike I wanted to mention it by name specifically because I don't think I have seen much if anything in the way of explanations of this kit uh, for the rad runners or for rad power bikes in general on YouTube yet and I'm here to con confirm excuse me for you all that yes this kit is basically the same display as the Bolton display it has the same menu system behind it the display instructions from the Bolton kit work for going through the parameters on the secondary menus of this uh, display when you need to get into it and get after it so anything that you find on the internet that references the other companies kits the big game bikes kits the uh bolton e-bikes kits um if you need to order from electrobikeworld.com as i chose to do you can refer to those other resources and you're you're more or less looking at the same stuff these are really fun bikes, you guys. I'm not gonna do a radio check-in or listen for the net right now because I don't think I'm at the right time of day for our local net. Um, absolutely loving these rad power bikes, loving e-bikes in general as a quieter option to the gas-powered mopeds, motorcycles, etc. that I have had so much fun on for all these so many years. Obviously, you're not getting as far on these. You're not getting as far as fast on these either, and you need to do a little bit of work to help keep it uh, maintaining a decorous pace around town, right? It's a little bit of give and take. I personally, as a bike rider, love that and enjoy that part about it probably the most. I love pedaling along with the rad and, and working together with it to get over the hardest parts of the hardest hills and then having it pick right back up for me and, and put me back in the catbird seat another moment or two later doing 18 or 20 miles an hour fairly effortlessly. Um, let's look forward to doing some rides together with this and the Rad Runner Plus soon and I'm working on the missus and getting her her technician's license as soon as we possibly can so we really can have some fun combining comms and mobility together with you. Uh, thanks you guys. Comment below questions that you have about the Rad Power bikes, about e-bikes in general, about the uh, modifications that I've made to this bike either in the Farkle department, namely parts and accessories um, or in the performance department namely that display and controller I'll be happy to answer questions for you below until next time everybody this is Steve Kilo Juliet 7 Whiskey Quebec Kilo signing off for now